Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to finish our discussion on stoichiometry with percent yield. Today's essential question, what does the percent yield of a reaction measure, and how is it calculated? For today's lecture, you should have available your periodic table, unit conversion table, and calculator. Okay, so what is percent yield? Percent yield is a measure of the efficiency of a reaction carried out in the laboratory. Okay, so theoretical yield. Stoichiometry calculations are used to determine the amount of product expected. Okay, so this would be in a perfect world. So you do stoichiometry calculations and figure out how much product you should make if everything goes perfectly. And then we've got actual yield. And this is the amount of product actually produced in the laboratory. So this would be like your real world. Because in truth, the real world is not the perfect world. It's usually something does not go exactly as expected. So percent yield is a com comparison of the amount of product actually produced with the expected amount. And often, usually, the actual yield is less than the expected yield. Again, in the perfect world, it, it, you would make the most amount of product possible. In the real world, that doesn't happen. Something doesn't go exactly right. Okay, so how do you calculate percent yield? The first thing you do is calculate the mass of product using the three-step stoichiometry method. Okay, so you start with the given and you calculate until you get to the mass of the product, like we've been doing. If you are given the mass of more than one reactant, you will first need to calculate the limiting reagent to figure out, you know, how much product you can actually make. You know, the most amount of product you can make with the, with the limiting reagent. Okay? Um, then you compare the actual yield with the percent yield using this formula. Percent yield equals actual yield, what you figured out in the laboratory, divided by theoretical yield. That's what you calculated, times 100% to get your percentage. That's really all there is to percent yield. It's not that difficult. Okay, let's try this. What is the percent yield if 13.1 grams CaO is actually produced? when 24.8 grams of CaO, CaCO3 is heated. Okay, so we need to first figure out the, um, the theoretical yield. So for this, we're going to be doing a mass-mass conversion. So let's find our knowns. And our known is 24.8 grams of CaCO3. Okay, and our unknown then um, is CaO. That's what we're looking for. We know that we produced one of the products. We produced 13.1 grams of CaCO, but what we want to find out is the theoretical yield. So we need to do the calculations on CaCO3. Okay, so we're going to start with mass known, which is 24.8 grams. CaCO3, and our unknown is blank grams of CaO. We're going to need to drive through mole known town and mole unknown town. And from here, we just do the calculations we've been doing. Okay, so we're going to have a four-column grid for this problem. And we'll start by putting the known in. So we have 24.8 grams CaCO3 over 1. And now we need to convert from mass known to mole known. And for that, we use one mole of the known, which is CaCO3 equals the molar mass of the known, which we calculate using the periodic table. 
And when I calculated that, I came up with 100.09 grams of CaCO3. Um, however, calcium, carbon, and oxygen all have th four sig figs, so we'll change that to 100.1. Okay, we put it in the grid. We'll put the mass on the bottom so we can cancel out. So we have 100.1 grams CaCO3 over one under one mole CaCO3. Remember, when you're using um, mole to mass conversions, you have one mole of the known equals the molar mass of the known. All right, so gram CaCO3 cancel out, gram COC. And we're at mole CaCO3, which is where we expected to be. So, so far we're on the right track. Now we need to convert from mole known to mole unknown. And for mole, mole conversions, we use the mole mole ratio from the balanced equation. So we find our known in the balanced equation, which is CaCO3, and our unknown, which is CaO. And it looks like we have one mole of each, so we will put one mole CaCO3 on the bottom and one mole CaO on the top. Cross out, mole CaCO3 crosses out with mole CaCO3. We're at mole CaO, which is where we thought we were supposed to be, so we're doing good. And the last step before calculation is to go from mole unknown to mass unknown. So we use the equality one mole unknown, which is CaO, equals the molar mass of the unknown, which again is CaO. And we'll find the molar masses on the periodic table, add them together. And I came up with 56.08 grams CaO. And put that in the grid. We'll have one mole CaO at the bottom and 56.08 grams CaO on the top. Make sure they cross out. Does mole CaO cross out mole CaO? Yes. We're at gram CaO, which is where we thought we should be. So all we have left now is to calculate. And when I multiplied across the top, I came up with 1390.784 grams CaO. And multi multiplying across the bottom, I came up with 100.1. And then when I divide, I got 13.893. Gram CA. Oh. All right, let's go back and look at our sig figs. We have three sig figs, four sig figs, and four sig figs. So our answer will have three sig figs. So we'll keep the 13.8. The nine, the first one we're going to drop, is five or larger. So that will make our final answer 13.9 grams CA. Okay, so what we just calculated here is the theoretical yield. Okay, what we should have made in a perfect world. So now let's go back to our original question. What they wanted us to find out is the percent yield. Okay, so percent yield, if you remember, is the actual yield. This is the one that we that was measured in the laboratory, divided by the theoretical yield, and then that answer is multiplied by 100%. All right, so our actual yield they gave us in the problem, which is 13.9 grams. Our theoretical yield we calculated as 13.9 grams. All right, so we're going to have percent yield 
equals the actual yield, which is 13.1 grams, divided by the theoretical yield, again, 13.9 grams. And then we're going to multiply that by 100%. Grams cross out. When we stick it in the calculator, I zero, whoops, nope, I forgot to multiply it by 100. Let's try that again. Multiplied by 100, 94.2446 and so forth percent, three sig figs. So our percent yield is 94.2%. Okay. So in a perfect world, the amount that we th thought we should make would be the same as the amount we di actually did make, and we would have 100%. World's not normally perfect, so we ended up with what we call a 94.2% yield. All right, that's it for today. Have a good one.